every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. No king will rule forever, and no conflict will last forever. Such was the faith of Romulus and Rome during the final decades of the 8th century BCE. While just to the south in ancient Greece, many different city-states got into a widespread conflict during the Levantine War. It was just before the turn of the century that Rome would be heading into a time of relative peace. With the passing of Romulus as the first king of Rome in 716 BCE, there was now a gap of one year in which the members of the Senate exercised the royal power. This was rotated between members of the Senate on a five-day period. Romulus had seized full control of the lands directly surrounding Rome, as well as that of the Sabines, after the death of King Tatius had brought an end to their joint ruling of both regions. According to the Sabines, it was now time that they provided the heir to the throne. To this, Rome agreed, but only if they could appoint this man. In 715 BCE, the Senate finally came to an agreement. The person most qualified for this kingship was to be Numa Pompilius, who was, according to some accounts, the son-in-law of the old King Tatius. Numa first rejected the offer, and much preferred to live his life away from politics and mainly warfare. He felt that under the rule of Romulus, many a conflict was started, and the new king of Rome would have to be someone with an appetite for war, for which he himself had none. But after much discussing on the topic, and hearing out all involved, he did accept in the end. Numa being a man of the faith, was the first ruler of Rome to establish the routines of religious rituals. As someone who was not out for war, he also decided on the establishment of the priesthood called the Fetialis. These priests had to advise the Senate on the issues of war and peace. However, if tensions would rise between Rome and its neighbors, the act of negotiation was always preferred over the aggressive act of war. Rome was under the leadership of King Numa until his passing in the year 673 BCE, which had seen the King of Peace ruling over the city and its conquered lands for more than 40 years. After the passing of the second King of Rome, times would change once again and battlefields would be plentiful. Tullus Hostilius, now the third king, came from Roman descent, as his grandfather Hostus Hostilius, who had fought together with Romulus and died during the Sabine invasion of Rome. The first serious act of war by Tullus was to once and for all make the city of Alba Longa his vessel. He didn't need much to set his plan into motion. After dispute erupted between several Roman and Alban citizens, both sides accused the other side of robbery which required both Rome and Alba Longa to send emissaries with the hope of solving this conflict. With the Alban delegation arriving in Rome, Tullus saw to it that his guests would be treated to all the hospitality the city had on offer. The delegation sent by Tullus, however, was instructed to make known their demands as soon as they arrived in Alba Longa. Presenting some ridiculous demands and thus being rejected by the Albans, Tullus could now declare war by the virtue of the Alban first refusal. The Albans, not willing to come off second fiddle once again, marched directly into Roman territory under the command of their king, Cluilius. The army was ordered to set up camp just outside of Rome and had to subsequently dig a large trench around the city. Cluilius, wanting to lay siege to the city, died, however, of unknown causes before any real confrontation with the Romans. The Albans then appointed Metius Fufetius as the dictator to lead the army. Tullus, however, had managed in the meantime to get his army past the Alban camp during the night and continued onwards into Alban territory. Metius, realizing this, quickly followed the Romans and set up his camp close by. An emissary was sent to Tullus, asking for negotiations to be held between both sides. As the armies on either side prepared for a confrontation, it was Tullus and Metius who met in the middle of what would probably soon be the field of battle. The Albans, however, had different plans. Metius pointed out that beyond the borders of Rome and Alba Longa, the Etruscan cities would seize any opportunity if the losses on both sides would be substantial when the battle was over. 
it was therefore decided that both armies would provide three of their best champions who would be doing battle. The first two chosen warriors of Rome fell to the sword of the Alban champion. It was the last Roman soldier by the name of Publius Horatius who managed in heroic fashion to defeat not only the first but all three Alban champions and win victory for Rome. Alba Longa now became a vassal of Rome. With Tullus being drastically different in his way of governing compared to his predecessor Numa, the relation between the Romans and the Sabines cooled down over the years. Tensions were brewing when Rome got the information that some of its merchants were being held prisoner by the Sabines. The Sabines, on the other hand, got the news that some of its citizens were being detained in Rome. It is unknown who moved first and who retaliated as a response, or if both incidents happened at the same time. Being angry with the current situation and displeased with the way Tullus ruled as king, the Sabines wanted to respond by force. For this, they sought the help of Vei, another city-state that had fought and lost against Rome when Romulus was still king. While the neighbor of Vei, Fidene, had become a vassal of Rome, Vei had not. This is something they wanted to keep this way, so for the time being, Vei would not break the peace treaty between themselves and Rome. Thus, the government decided not to send any official help. Some volunteers from Vei joined the cause on their own accord, but this was not with official consent. In any case, it was not enough because when Tullus got the news of what the Sabines had tried, he directly marched into their territory and met the Sabine army just on the edge of the Militiosa forest. The battle was short as both the Roman infantry and cavalry was far more superior. For this battle, a new unit of cavalry was added, consisting of Alban soldiers who now dwelt the city of Rome, trying to sell their services. With the infantry on both sides initially starting the fight, it was already showing that the Romans had the upper hand. While the Sabines started to lose ground, Tullus gave the command for a cavalry charge. This charge easily dealt with any opposing cavalry and then set their sights on the Sabine infantry. Soldiers of the latter now lost all their courage and fled the field of battle, amounting to heavy losses in the process. After the fight with the Sabines, things would not quiet down for the Romans. While Tullus was distracted with quelling the Sabine uprising, Matthias of Alba Longa had taken this opportunity to get the Fidenates all riled up after he had visited their city. During its first major conflict with Rome, Fidene had become a vassal state, just as Alba Longa had recently. Matthias' idea was that if he could manage to get the Fidenates to turn on Rome, their combined numbers would be too much for Rome to handle thus making it impossible for Tullus to fight all other city-states surrounding the Romans at the same time. One of the accounts on what happened next goes as follows. The people of Fidene and Vei are both of Etruscan origin, as well as being neighboring cities. Vei therefore decided this time, contrary to their previous decision, when the Sabines pleaded for help, that they would join the fight. Thus, Vei ended the peace treaty it had with Rome and prepared their army for war. With both Etruscan cities now joining forces, there was an additional twist planned between Fidene and Alba Longa. The plan was for the Albans to join Rome initially, as was expected from them, being a vassal state. However, once both sides would march towards each other, the Albans were supposed to desert away from the battlefield leaving the Roman army alone to fight both Fidene and Vei. On the day of the battle, the army of Vei had crossed the river Tiber and joined the Fidenates on their right flank. With the river on their right and the mountain ridges on their left, they was only forward and meet the Romans head on in battle. On the other side, it was Tullus Hostilius who had positioned the Roman army to face Vei and the Alban army under the command of Matthias to face Fidene. Not knowing what the Albans had planned, Tullus gave the command to charge. Initially, the Romans and the Albans moved side by side to face the two Etruscan armies. However, before even one blow was struck, Matthias moved his army away from the Fidenates as he had promised. What happened next is not completely clear, 
as there are multiple angles as to how this battle then played out. The first version has Tullus in the leading role as the commander of Rome. In this case, he managed to quickly come up with a morale boosting lie towards his soldiers, stating that the Albans were moving as personally instructed by him. The Fidenates, having been a vassal of Rome for many years, by now understood Latin. As the instructions given by Tullus were shouted across the battlefield, the Fidenates feared a double cross from the Albans. So even though Matthias was still moving his army away from the fight, the Fidenates decided to flee back to their city. It was then, not shortly after, with Rome being the superior force, that the now one remaining opposing army was routed back to the city of Vei. The other version of this battle has exactly the same outcome, but in that case there was no quick thinking involved on the side of Tullus, and the Romans, just on the basis of their combat superiority, managed to defeat both Etruscan armies without the Albans. Either way, it showed that Rome was the dominant power in this region. Tullus, furious with Matthias, managed to have him captured and sent back to Rome. There, Matthias was executed for treason. Subsequently, the Roman army was sent to the city of Alba Longa with the orders to demolish it with the exception of the temples. The entire population of Alba Longa was taken away from the city and forced to move to Rome. Due to this act, the population of Rome now doubled in size and thus further strengthening the amount of people under the direct control of Tullus. He then set about increasing the size of the professional army to be used in future campaigning seasons. After 40 relative peaceful years under the second king Numa, Tullus Hostilius as the third king during his reign had once again shown that the future was to be one of conquest. 